Hello, welcome to this lecture. Introduction to API. We'll see about the introduction. API, Application Programming Interface, is a set of routines, protocols, and tools for building software applications. Basically, an API specifies how software components should interact with each other. API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is the software intermediary that allows two applications to talk each other. When the server is having application server and it requires some other services from another software development web application server, we'll establish a services called to talk each server to communicate with the data we call it as application programming interface. Each time you use an app like Facebook, send an instance messages, or check the weather on your mobile phone using uh, like a API to interacting with the main server. In single web application or using mobile apps, talk with multiple software services it will use APIs to communicate each other or multiple servers. Most of the mobile phones are using nowadays, which is the Android apps and iPhone apps. These apps are communicating to, uh, like uh, perfectly with the main server to interacting and collecting the information to the using API and uh, collecting the information and it will be presenting you and displaying in you your mobile phone. Thank you for watching this lecture. Thank you. Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, you will be known what is API. In our previous lecture, also we have discussed something about introduction to API, how it would be. Here, you will know what is API with a simple example I have given for you. An application programming interface is so called, it is API. And it is a set of services to building software applications as well. Basically, an API specifies how two software components should interact with the different servers and different services. An API, an example, when you are using an application on your mobile phone, the application connects to the internet and sends the data to the server. Then it will retrieve if it is a query or search item, it will collect the data from the server and interprets it perform the necessary action and send it back to your phone and it will be displayed. We'll see an example too. Imagine you are sitting in a table with a restaurant and you are having a menu and choices to be taken per order form. The kitchen is the part of the system and they will be prepared in your order. But what is missing is the critical link is to communicate you order and with the kitchen. The delivery your food back to your table. Now you see here, that's where the waiter or API comes into the picture. The waiter is the messenger or API that takes your request or order, tells the kitchen to the system what to do to prepare your order based on your list of the items you choose. Then the waiter delivers the response back to you, like uh, in this case, this is the food will come back to you. The API will tell you what you are requesting. Based on the API, it will cause to the uh, kitchen to be prepared and get back to you. The food is prepared like an API, the waiter will get back to you the food and it will be served to you. I hope you are most like a uh, easy way to understand like uh, with examples of what is API. We'll see exactly with the real time functionality of uh, making a simple things. With the interacting how you are going to be in a, like a adding and interacting with the APIs will go for it.
Thank you for watching this lecture. Thank you. Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to integrate the API of for Google Maps. It's a very super easy and grab an URL from the like a API key and integrate in your HTML. That's all about to get an API from Google Maps. To get an API, for this you have to visit like I see, this is the what you are going to be loading Google Maps demo API. This one. See, this is the for, for the purpose we have using for development purpose only. To get this, what you want to do is go to Google. Google Map API key. And go to like a developers of Google developers.google.com get an api key for maps for javascript you search for here you will be connected to google developers once you get an a google developer you have to register yourself once you register successfully get an api key before you begin you have to register with for see like a google cloud platform console you have to visit there and api and services credentials you go to there the credentials page get like a um, create credentials for api key and api key dialog like a created dialog will be displayed under that you will get api key for your map okay add the api key request for you to use on your google maps like this like a script this is the script you can use to like add your javascript to call your map where your pointings are going to be restricted in this position of the place, you have to place your own API key, which is registered with Google Platform. All right. Now, let's see. I will show you a simple code to implementing this thing. Go to Sublime Text Editor here. And now, the CC, the function for in initiating the map. And under that, you, you, like, um, well, you are, you have a taken for predefined, like, our area of latitude and magnitude this is the where you will get of your like uh, area if you are want to see some particular city to be displayed your map where you have to find out using google like a city or a area name plus like a, you get the latitude and longitude values you will get the map automatically once you place here with this particular area of longitude and latitude values once you put it as a document object, we are going to getting with the map. And these are the code map and markers you have to place in your code. And see, very simple and pretty easy to, once you get the key from the site, you have to place like a key here like this. From here to here, you have to initiate that key. That's it. This is the demo key I'm using here. Like once it is done for this uh, solution of the demo, I'll remove from that app where I have registered. All right, you to create like this, once it is uh, successfully created and you want to use for it, you have to register over there and use for it. If you want to remove this watermark permanently, you have to buy some of the services from Google Maps and you have to integrate this API key. This is so-called, we can call it as that API services. This is the source we are using some other services like Google Maps we are using to integrating to our services to display the map. So this is the website is so called it is HTTP.
and longitude values you will get the map automatically from the site you have to place like a key here like this from here to here you have to initiate that key that's it this is the demo key i am using here like a once it is done for this uh, solution of the demo i will remove from that app where i have registered all right you to create like this once it is uh, successfully created and you want to use for it you have to register over there and use for it if you want to remove this watermark permanently you have to buy some of the services from google maps and you have to integrate this api key this is so called we can call it as that api services this is the source we are using some other services like google maps we are using to integrating to our services to display the map so this is the website is so called it is http Maps forward slash API forward slash JS question mark key and the key is displaying here with the callback of init map like map initialization. All right, that is that is the very simple, pretty easy to integrating with the U like a APIs application programming interfaces to our local HTML forms or any other programming language. I hope you are aware of how to integrate maps to your local servers. And similarly, one more thing, I can give you a simple example to integrate your Google Maps. Rather than using APIs, you can also integrate with like uh, so-called it is like uh, I can simply say that uh, iframes. How it is? I show you here. Like uh, go over here and uh, open the maps. Very simply, you can you know like uh, integrate maps to your web pages. Yeah, go to maps. For this, you have to log in. Already, you have to log in in your computer system and find it your address where it is locating to your computer system. Find systems and where it is in office address. I'm entering here. Find system. Wow, it is located here somewhere around this place. I'm clicking. So, what I want to do is just click here on share. Click here on share. Now see here, send a link for this or embed a map. There is an option embed a map. Now this is the embed map. There are options called so called here is the medium and uh, large and uh, different type of activities like uh, small. How it would be required to you to integrate your map into your iframe using like uh, a copy of HTML code. Like a small I am taken copy of HTML code and come to here after this script tag i am placing the one more iframe tag here this is also it's a source api this is the google maps embed all the links of the key will come along with the latitude and longitude of our uh, location what we have set now save this and uh, like uh, yeah go to our local site and uh, where it is this yes this refresh the page you will get once you will get this API key, which we have used for key purpose, and later you will see the map point link here. Once as a user, you will get this information very simple and accurately free. Once the details of your feed and values are available about your company or area, what you want to display, it will be displayed like this. It will be more useful and simple to very simple, easy to integrate map to your contact as form. This is about to like uh, this API tutorial and we'll see the next lecture more. Thank you.
Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, you are going to learn geolocation and geocoding using API. How pretty it is. We'll see how about it is. First of all, I would like to show you the demo how that geolocation. Now let's click here that ready-made URL. It is here. Yeah. Once you want to know about your location, just and this is the demonstration purpose we have a collected API key for the development purpose only. Now the location is found and it is showing here, it is around the country where it's very near to my city. All right, and this is the location, current location it is going to be taken. Now we will see how the program it is. See here the geolocation it is and a very super easy. We need to do like a initiating of the map and latitude, longitude, how we have done our, of our previous lecture. Now, it is a very simple to like a position and coordinates of latitude and longitude we have to specify like this. And the center of the point it is locating of the map controlling. And this is the code. See, this is the API I'm calling for the same API for this also. For this geolocation, if you want to enable, where you have uh, done with the registration of uh, Google developers, like uh, like uh, getting an app with the, like, uh, like what we have uh, done with the registration with the Google Maps platform, there you have to enable the services of uh, geocoding and geolocation. Then you will able to get very simple and all the facilities of geocoding it will be given. Now let's see here, I'm be, I'll be uh, looking for something like uh, going to be connecting with the like uh, where you want to explore the things like console here you go with the google map you will get all the products and what you will get free and what you will be charged here most of the things you will be charged why because actually there is a more accurate data you will get it all you need to know to register before the registration you will know about the services which is google is offering to you unless until it will be generate a bill and it will be reach you the bill once it is uh, completed the bill cycle, right? That it is uh, loading something. Over here it is showing. And now see here, geolocation API. Once if I logged in as in a Google Cloud platform, see, this is the Google Maps section I am here and a geolocation API and the APS which one you want to uh, like uh, register yourself. Many of the services, Maps SDK for Android, Places API, Roads API, Maps JavaScript API, Maps Embed API, Distance Matrix, Time Zone, SDK, Maps Evaluation, like uh, how many are geo, geo, like a uh, geocoding API, these are the APIs. Once you register any of the API and by getting the credentials and having the API key, like uh, comes to our home page of this HTML form, and this is the code also you will get from that Google with the help of Welcome to this lecture. HTML form, and this is the code also you will get from that Google with the help of.
Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss with you a very simple auto-complete address from Google Maps API. Using this API, you will get auto-completion of uh, your what you are expecting, something like uh, addresses and all. How it is pretty easy. For that, for this component to be enabled, what you need to do is you have to visit like a Google, like a APIs registration, and there you have to like a auto complete option of a API. You have to register. The APIs are here, and uh, one you will find out auto complete, like a auto complete addresses. Let's check with this. You have to enable that particular API. Then you will be able to. Come back to our code here. I'll show you the very simple demonstration. Yes, auto complete address form it is. This is the form is available completely with the Google registration. Once you have app enabled on your side, you will be get all the location of this code will be available at a API place itself on developers side of Google. Now see here the location field auto complete and enter your address. Geo location will be called. Once the geolocation is called as a JavaScript function, it will be like see this function with the get current position, it will be checked with the current position and all. And uh, then, then your custom search button it will provide you to find out what is the address you are going to be searching. All right, see fill in address if it is found, all will be filled here. And this is the init auto complete function will be initiated. Now you can see the output how you will understand in place of cpi it is still loading auto complete let me search for to complete address it will be enabled so something is coming i don't know what Right, you find out very simply it will forms. Now this is the form you will get it for auto complete for complete of address. Enter your address here. See by default it will ask you the location of your local. Then height of that if I enter. This is the page can't be load uh, like a Google Maps can't be. Do you want to own this site? Means it will ask you to register something. And if you are having a registration and if you are trying with the real time, this is the local server I'm going to trying by calling this API. This is the API key you have used here itself, geolocation, where you have to use a real time. See, this is the API key I have commented here. So you have to enable this API key. Uh, most probably, yes, here it is a place here. Whereas it is not working, means this is the demonstration purpose I have registered now. So it is not involving here, where you have to take a proper response of the registration with the license one. It will perfectly works with your requirement. It will it will automatically finds you the address of our Hyderabad, like a city address, something your house number if you put. Like it will give you like a state address, city, state, country, along with the zip code, it will provide you automatically. Such a beautiful information which is available in autocomplete form in Google APIs where we can use it. I think it is uh, very much useful for many of you who are not understanding about the addresses. Those who are having only the house numbers, you will get complete address from the using these maps. Thank you for watching this lecture. Thank you. Hello, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, you are going to learn Facebook Login API. How it is easy to create by having an API of a Facebook Developers API session to be account to be enabled our request, and we are calling this particular API through our local PHP development environment. How we are going to integrating with our local PHP project. Will all the things we learn very simply in this lecture. Let's begin with the session. Go to Google and type very simply Facebook Graph API space GitHub. Hit and enter. See the first two, like, 
like the link you see here, the Facebook archive. Just open this link. PHP group is DK, you will see here. Once you open this link, you just go through that. Here, the complete decision is available here. If you want to run with, uh, go around. And I will show you very simple and easy super steps. Just take the composer code. We are getting all these, uh, what we require the parts of the code from here. And uh, now you go to like a XAMPP installation of your PHP environment. Go to HD Docs. Here you can create one project folder called FB underscore login. FB is my project folder. Under the project folder, we want to initiate that execution of that particular like a command of composer. Just go to C and D command prompt. Here you want to find out this uh, path where it is exactly. Go back and uh, come to XAMPP and uh, come to HD Docs. Yes. And uh, this is the FB icon login folder. Hit enter. Now we are the path here in the changing directory by command of issued with the changing directory. We have a change directory from XAM HD Docs. We have created a folder of the project called FB icon login. Now you paste the command what we have copied from GitHub. Like uh, this is the composer space require space Facebook icon like a forward slash graph iPhone SDK, hit enter. If you don't know about composer, write a comment that we'll discuss about the composer. I'll share with you more. Just hit enter, it will take a very less time to install a complete requirements. Like a, what, what the SDK requirements we are going to collecting from this side. All right, it won't take much time. It depends on your computer performance. Like you see the Facebook SDK, Graph SDK, it is getting loading composer repositories with the package information. Now let's be wait for a while. Yeah, updating the dependencies. Yeah, installing it is. Yeah, meanwhile you check with that uh, the window if you break in here, it is it is creating here its backend. Yeah, writing log file and generating auto load files it is completed successfully. If you receive without error with this auto load files is generating means it is uh, successfully installed in your local environment of php all right now let's see here the composer composer.log here and the vendor these are the files and auto load.php facebook composer everything is here so we have to create some php files now we'll see how it is Yeah, here you need to require fb-init.php. With this fb -in, like iphone init.php within the project you have to create. And here you have to like a, create the start position. Start the session, like a session you need to create here. Once the created the session, you have to write like include auto load file from vendor folder. That is the require or include, you can specify here, and dot vendor auto load dot php, which will comes from like you see here. Just now we have installed like a vendor by using the composer command. We have installed this vendor packages. From these auto load dot php, we are like a calling to our now developing of the code with the help of this auto load dot php. All right. Now here you can initiate by calling this functionality at the like a class object, we are instantiating a new object called dollar fp variable and new Facebook of backslash with the Facebook. And now you have to write a three parameters. We have to like a pass for calling this particular class. All right. First one is app ID. You take in a empty string. And the second one is app secret. You take an empty string. Why? Because actually, I will tell you where you will get this app ID and app secret and the default underscore graph underscore version. These are the things you will get it from like um, the version which is going on as of now. It is in the version 5.7. You all the three things you be ready. 
I'll show you now how you will get the app ID in App Secret. Now go to Google again and uh, go here with uh, Facebook, like uh, developer login, developer login. Just click the Facebook developer. Now Facebook for developer. Go over here and login with your Facebook credentials. It's here. Once you logged in, like if you are already logged in with the using Facebook, it will it will show you like the things. Okay. Go to the this is the Facebook log login credentials. It is showing like uh, Instagram business tools, artificial business, all the things it will show you. Go to the my apps. Yes, this is the my apps here. It is the my apps are, are running like a WordPress and a my login app it is. And uh, you can like uh, click add new app. And for my business and integration third party for uh, like uh, everything else. If you so like uh, if you are integrating a Facebook login, building Instagram game and all the things for everyone, everything else you choose for this one, third one. And here you can app display name, whatever you want to display here you can display something you display for it uh, something i have used for my uh, login so i can create a new underscore card associated with your my app id it is and uh, app contact or email id it's a uh, hidden and uh, do you have a business manager account if it is there it can be loaded here or else it will be leave it adding a new app and uh, integration with uh, anything else the name of the app it is uh, new underscore login I'm creating and uh, now click with if you are having any business account you can add here otherwise uh, you can remove very simply and uh, create app ID very simply you will get and the credentials of app ID and the secret we have uh, written in our code you just see here app ID and app secret these are the two things are required and uh, please complete the security check it is asking i am asking actually some it is asking you any secrets like uh, i'm not a robot you check with the security aspects if it is any yes i'm not a robot just submit and now the app id will be created here yes the app contact id is uh, it will be shows your email id itself all right once the app id is created this is the app id it is created you take for this is of your application development where you have a placed here now that is the app id you have to take and place it whereas uh, yeah you take it, it's no problem click to copy code and paste over here and similarly we have an uh, the products we should add for this new underscore login app so this is the facebook login audience network analytics many messenger webhooks insta games uh, like a marketing API, more many things, web payments, many things you can try to yourself. Whereas we are going to with this session for this, like a setup Facebook login, we are going to using now. I pressed it setup. Let's check this. Yes, and uh, for the purpose, use a quicker and to add app login, your app gets started. You just select the platform for this. I'm using this platform for web local web hosting. I'm not like a site I'm showing. So you can select www and tell us about your website. This is the site URL. If it is in a public production, you place the public URL. Or else you take simply of your local URL called, let me post in our folder called FB icon. Login, it will come to here. Okay, and fbinit.php we have used. You take this URL and paste over here. Uh, check here where is your like, site URL? You have to okay, it will show you login. Yeah. FB login forward slash save it. If it is in a local domain name, you are already registered. You try to change this domain with your website. That's all. Okay, save it and continue. Like if you want to take it, this is the action code we are we are going to be using. All right, the function and all the things we are going to be used here. It will be provided by you. If you want, you can use it. And next, click next, and uh, copy the code if you want, or click next. And uh, we everything we are we are going to be discussing all these things. Or else you will have in a link button if you want, 
and uh, check the login status everything will be here you can check with this also all right at last we have uh, received all the things and finally we have received here and go to the dashboard finance 6111 is our id yes new login it is here it is there our app id now go to the settings basic This is the app secret you will find out here. Very simple. All right. And if you want to see this actually like this, you can check with the show and you will get it by entering of your password. Uh, uh, demonstration by entering of your FB password, you will see this app secret. Absolutely, you will get it that uh, like a secret and you will continue with that. Okay. We'll see. And uh, taking this ID and the secret by entering at the place of our uh, this place of secret we have to do received app ID and the secret we have to take a copy of these two things from the developer site of Facebook now see here this is the key of the app secret once the tutorial of this lecture has been done I may remove my app what I have created for the lecture. all right for the demonstration, I am using this for my app, and uh, you will see here from that uh, uh, class what we are getting for this, uh, like uh, making a uh, helper tag. I am doing like uh, from this FB object to get redirect login helper, and this is the method I am going to calling. And uh, from this, actually, I have to uh, like uh, see this helper. What I am doing here, get login URL. This is the URL means. This is the login URL I'm sending to this URL. But I have a map at the, when I'm creating my app at a, a Facebook developer, I have a submitted. This is my local URL. If it is your like a regular domain, registered domain is available with you for live, you can change with this too live. All right. And for this functionality, we'll see here, like I'm making this of the login URL, we'll see about the URL, how it is coming. Now, we will see for running of this print icon R termination and uh, we'll place this uh, login URL to sorry login URL to I'm placing this to verifying the URL is coming or not by running this is the form is fb icon init dot php let's check here let's see here now here it is a refresh. Yes, now check with this. You have you seen this? This is the Facebook and the, this URL is going to be printed. Login with Facebook. This all will coming from means the URL is going to be calling. If I click this, it will automatically redirect you to like a Facebook. All right. From here onwards, you have to create one more form called index.php in your form to be visible and accessible of your project. It is the initial page all right from this we are going to be extending our code we'll see here our web page now see uh, like uh, initiating fbinit.php instead of that any web home page of web page will go to index.php so this is the fb hyphen init i'm going to integrating here by using the require like a single course of the page path of fbinit.php and it is required to like a session to be initiated why right? because whenever we are going to use the session parameters we have to use like a session underscore start session underscore start it is in a default uh, php functionality and uh, create in a link item here with the hf link and uh, make sure that this login url you have to call here to be written and the uh, text with the login with facebook and now see just run this will get it like index.php to open this with this thing so go to here and press hit enter and uh, yeah notice one notice is our session start is already has been started so the line number four so we are going to be already session is initiating it's coming up so we can come in out or you can remove it require you review uh, like uh, if it is any session issues are coming then you place it otherwise it's a uh, normal it's not required now save it and refresh now you will get the login with Facebook. If you click this button, you will be redirected to Facebook login and you will be shown here the page of the login. All right. Let's 
login with Facebook, it is coming now. Yes, if you click this, yeah, it will be redirect you. Like uh, if it is not redirecting and the back, it is not going to be the home page. What you do is, uh, yeah, one thing you have to take this URL, this copy, and go to this app and the Facebook login extend settings. Go to the settings under the settings page. You have to maintain and specifying for uh, uh, like uh, yeah redirect to check redirect URI to check redirection URI validation is required here. So place this URI at uh, check URI. This is the this is a valid redirect URI application you have given now. Check URI you can submit it and uh, that's all. Now you come back here to our application and just click uh, login with Facebook. We direct you to the code it is showing see here it's automatically it will show you advertising right and uh, it should be like a uh, enabled function my login app i have using now yes zero of limited users it is login details for more like uh, you want to see that uh, Statistical information and all it will be shown here. Yeah, level rate twenty. Yeah, and now you can come back to here and you will you are going to be created and it is calling this URI. Have you seen here? It is calling to be Facebook. Again with Facebook, you try to hit and it will be direct you to show you that user ID and password. So reload. It is a uh, when I am pressing index.php, it is uh, saying something like uh, access token. I have added a code here. When I press the login with Facebook, it's not going to be permitting me to make a presenting a Facebook page. It's very simple and a very super easy answer. Why? Because my login app is asking me to some permissions and features may require to business and the verification to be done. The verification it is asking getting started to submit some documents it is asking all right as of now i didn't gone through this verification so it is restricting me let's we continue with the next of the session code how it would be like uh, from here we have to get the line of help desk which helper is completed and now try with access token access token we have to like maintain and get the from Facebook class to get the access token and we have to assign a variable and each set access token we have to make it as a string and convert to string it and uh, we'll put it as in a session when the user is logged in the Facebook or not we'll verify and uh, we'll keep him alive and once it is done what you will do is like a catch like a, this is in a try catch exception this is a try it is there and uh, Catch and exception, you can try to like a write done. The, there is a no problem. And uh, now, in between, once we have a uh, prepared for session object here, once uh, see redirecting to the home page called location.index.page. This is the index.page, it will come when it will arise this index.page. What we are going to do on this init page, it will done. We have a prepared like a uh, access these things here itself. All right, now what we are going to do is. Here we will check it if is set session access token is there or not. If it is not there, we will uh, transmitting him to logout.php. If it is available here is an access code, we will uh, try to make it as an else and uh, we will try to go over with the login continuation. All right. Now check with that here. Now we will get the user first name, email and last name. How it is? Yes. Set session access. If it is access token, try with FB. Default access token is access token where we are making and fit like a setting of the FB. Set default token we are sending this and result set get in like a forward slash me like a locale. These are the things US underscore language we are using this one and the fields called name, comma, email. This two like a name and email we are going to take it. All right. And now user like a, what is this? ES get a, like a graph user. And uh, echo user, we are making it is in a get field. All right, paste it from here. So you have to make sure that try block for 
checking of the access token and ESET access token once you have set successfully. And we are going to collect the user like a first name and email and all. How we are going to take like set if ESET we have to set that uh, verifying an ESET access token here and try with this default access token we are collecting with the session that we have get from Facebook class. And now storing the result like a FB class get uh, this uh, me colon local in and fields of name and email and the user equal to one variable it is assigning for this result set and get graph user and now see here echo hello i have appended here and the user it's a get field of me and similarly you can take a forget field of email so you'll take a like a username and email. let's check here like a just simply take a one more parameter over here and uh, just uh, you type that uh, email. You will call the users hello, like um, hello username. You will get like similarly my email. That's it. You will get the user email ID and like a username and uh, email ID. You will get here. If it is there any, we have a put in into the try catch black. So if it is there any errors, you may receive while in real time. You may be throw out the errors and you will identify within the local environment. Now, index page would be like this, verifying the access token. If not, it will be throw out you log out. And if it is within login, it will ask you to the login. And the logout list should be like this, encode FBI and IP. Session to be when the person is logged out from the Facebook, she should be destroy all the sessions. We have to be taken care about our services of for Facebook. And unset session access key should be unset, like a disable or nullable. And header it should be removed to index.php. It's all about to run our simple project of API calling like uh, Facebook API to integrate our local environment. And see here, run over here and Facebook like a login index.php login with Facebook. Once it is directing, this is the directing means it's going to be calling your API successfully. And uh, once we are not able to see that particular authentication, see the authentication was well, to client, it is getting some issues over there. So you fulfill this requirement of the verification, these things, and it will be done your end. You will be get a proper and uh, accurate uh, Facebook uh, API. You'll be able to successfully log in. I hope you enjoy with this API. In further more sessions, we'll see and uh, what are the APS we are going to done. Thank you for using and watching this lecture. Thank you.